We are live. Thank you. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody, everybody to the Township of Georgian Bay Planning Council for Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. And I'd like to call this meeting to order at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Um, you know, as you well know, that I usually start uh, most meetings with a land acknowledgement. And I wanted to share with you that last night I had the pleasure of, of attending, you know, electronically, of course, a, uh, a talk that was put on by Takas Free Theater here in Barrie. Um, and it featured Indigenous artists. And one of them was a fellow by the name of Herbie Barnes, who is uh, actually, or learned, was just named the, art, the next artistic director of the Young People's Theatre in, in Toronto. So congratulations to him. But he, at one point, talked about land acknowledgement. And I thought it was very interesting, his perspective, and he is Indigenous, by the way, that uh, Herbie was saying that he thinks that what we sometimes forget in our land acknowledgements is to actually acknowledge the land. Uh, land acknowledgements have become a little too much just about um, acknowledging the Indigenous peoples who've been on our, the land for many years, but sometimes we forget to acknowledge the land itself. And so this morning, breaking my pattern a little bit, I think that, and perhaps it's appropriate because we're going into a planning council meeting, which is to, to a fair extent about the land around us, that we should acknowledge our great appreciation for the land. I know for many people in our township, the township itself has been uh, what has taught us to appreciate the great value of, of the nature around us, because we see a lot more of it than we may see in the cities where there, there's too much pavement and concrete and what have you. And so I think that, uh, you know, we must always remember how much the land has taught us. And then with that, be very thankful and grateful for the peoples who have watched over the land and taken care of the land for many, many centuries, eons before us. And, and with that, I'd like to thank our Indigenous neighbors and, and, their, and all those in their background who uh, have done so. Council, anyone have any declarations of pecuniary interests or code of conduct? conflicts. All right, I'm going to declare one, and that is going to be in regards to under new business item 6B, it's in regards to a Georgian Bay Land Trust Shore Road Allowance. And given my, um, the fact that I'm a director and officer of that organization, while I have absolutely no pecuniary interest, I think um, it could be argued that I have, do have a conflict of interest in that, uh, on that item. And so, um, uh, Councillor Wienko, I would ask if you wouldn't mind chairing the meeting during that particular item. Um, I would like to attend as a interested party, but not speak unless any questions are asked of me uh, for the for item 6B. Councillor Cooper. Just for clarification, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have been involved over the years with the land trust including being a board member and chairman of the board, but am no longer involved in that capacity at all, other than being a volunteer from time to time. Uh, so I'm not declaring any conflict, uh, but just wanted to make that clear because sometimes things get misunderstood. Thank you. Appreciate that, thank you. Okay. Remove my paper clip and get on to I have moved by Councillor Rienkel, seconded by Councillor Jarvis. Be it resolved that Council adopts the agenda of May 11th, 2021 as circulated. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Now we're going to go into the public meeting portion of our meeting. Councillor Bocek has his hand raised. Or is that part of his oh, vote? Councillor Bocek? I don't know if that was a vote or if that was. I will lower it and then. Okay. Um, I'm going to go on the presumption that Councillor Bocek was not raising his hand to speak, but if you, Councillor Bocek, if you need to correct me, please do so. 
This morning, this morning there is a public meeting scheduled for a shore road closing. I will briefly summarize the procedures to be utilized for the meeting. First, the clerk will advise council as to when, how, and to whom notice of the public meeting was circulated for the proposed shore road closing being considered. Next, staff will advise the purpose and effect of the bylaw and provide for any other information that is relevant to the applications and staff will su summarize any correspondence on file. From there, the public will have an opportunity to speak and provide comments to the bylaw being considered. Please be respectful of time and be concise with your comments. All commentators are requested to state their name and address for the record. Council will then have an opportunity to provide comments for clarification. I now declare this meeting to be a public meeting pursuant to the Municipal Act 2001 C25 as amended to deal with the following proposed shore road closing bylaw. SRC-18-09-1461 Harrison Trail. To our clerk. Notice of the public meeting was published in newspaper. Notice was sent to the abutting neighbors in close proximity of the property at least 20 days prior to today's meeting. All right, and to our staff. And I believe this is, uh, hang on here. I'm getting all, Mr. Hobson, I believe you're speaking to this one. Yes, good morning, your worship and council. Just gonna share my screen. Please do. And you're seeing my PowerPoint? Yes, we are. Great, thank you. Um, so as indicated, this is a public meeting for a shore road allowance closing. Um, this application is SRC 18-09. So this application was started in 2018. Um, so we're, we're going a little far back here, but nevertheless, um, the applicant is in attendance today. Uh, he, he did not indicate that he wished to speak um, during this public hearing, but we can bring him into the room um, later on if he wishes to do so. Uh, so the property in question, just to, to provide some context, uh, I'm still learning uh, the vast boundary that is Georgian Bay. So for me, it helps to, to show where we're looking at over here, but we're looking at 1461 Harrison Trail. And we can see our lot right here. So it's uh, lot 49 and lot 50 on concession eight, uh, originally in the township of Freeman. Um, so we will have a deeming bylaw as part of it to bring it into the township of Georgia Bay. Um, a close up on the property, you can see that there is some development on the property and, and there is a dock. Uh, the applicant is making the application to purchase the show road to increase the size of their property. The show road is approximately a thousand square meters and purchase price is 8,720 plus GST. Um, administration has no concerns with the shore road closing and there were no public concerns raised during the application. Um, I just want to point out that the survey, if anyone has noticed on it, it, I know it's difficult to see, but I've zoomed in here. So there's part one and there's part two of the shore road. Part one is what we're looking at today. Part two was just indicated on the survey because the surveyor that was utilized, um, it's part of the township that he always deals with. It's part of their policy and procedure to indicate, but that part two is underwater. Um, so we're not dealing with that at, in any way today. It's just there. And I just wanted to clarify in case there was any confusion as to what was going on. So part one is what we're looking at today. Um, with that said, if there's any questions and I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, are there, you, you, you stated, uh that um, the, the applicant did not wish to speak. Um, I'm gonna presume that, that we can confirm that. And I don't see any members of the public, do I? That, um, okay, I, I see uh, Peter Van Brussel with his hand up. Is that the applicant? That's correct, Your Worship. I'll bring him into the room now. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Cooper, I did note your hand, but we had to do this part first, <laughs> as, as you well know. Mr. Van Brussel, did you wish to add some comments to this? You are muted, by the way. 
you're muted. Okay, I'm fairly new at this, so That's all please right. bear with me. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Um, I just had a quick question. The, the part one and part two, the one, the part of it is underwater. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit, I mean, is, is the entire shore road allowance, does it include that part that's underwater? I mean, if the water level goes way down, will it, is that still part of the, the package? The, the dimensions of, of, of the entire road allowance, I guess is what I'm asking. That's a very legitimate question. Uh, Mr. Dobbs, Hobson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, and I can see some councillors shaking their head. So th the answer is no, it, it does not. So we're just looking at part two. We can't survey something that's underwater. Um, right. So if, if it does, if the water level drops or anything like that, legally, there's a small chunk of, of township owned property. From a, a real world implications on yourself, there wouldn't, there wouldn't really be any. Okay. I, I just, I just find that odd because depending on the level of the water, you would get more or less uh, allowance. And I was, I thought it was a, a fixed dimension of 66 feet or whatever it was. So it, I just, it's just the question, but I agree. Who's going to, you know, I don't, I don't think it's an issue. Do you like, as far as getting a permit to build a boathouse or extend a dock or anything like that goes, it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect anything. Is this correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, Ms. Gunby. I wonder if you could confirm because I, at one point I had the understanding that the entire shore road allowance would be transferred, but we could only charge for what was above water. Could you please confirm? Um, so it's been a while since I've done shore road allowance. So I apologize, Daniel, if this is going against what you said, but my recollection is if the water goes down, you will own all the way to the 20 meters. But if the water goes down further than that, you won't own beyond the 20 meters. So I right. don't have in front of me right now, but if say for only instance, there's 10 meters of shore road allowance above the water, if the water goes down to say 50 meters from the front lot line, um, Mr. Van Brussel would only technically own 20 meters because that's all we could sell. The rest is crown land. Of course. Thank you for that. You're welcome. But let's verify that and we'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that was my understanding, but it was good to get this verified. Um, I saw Councillor Cooper's hand and Councillor Hazelton. So we'll do it in that order, please. Um, thank you. And, and uh, I, on that particular question, I, I think what um, transpired over time was that we were, in fact, at one point selling crown land and charging for it. And uh, we found out we shouldn't be doing that. So um, I think that's sort of the, the technicality around this, that the cr crown or the province, whichever, owns the land uh, anywhere lower, we've got this right, lower than the high watermark, essentially. So the, the sort of the bar is the high watermark and everything else becomes crown. That's my understanding. Anyway, um, oh, but I'm sure others can uh, find out and clarify that, but I think we made that change a little while ago. The question though I had, Daniel, is um, it, it's not a big deal. It was just something you said about uh, the, the, at the beginning where you said this was in Freeman and it now is in the township of Georgian Bay. And I, I just wanted to sort of, my understanding is that Freeman, Gibson and Baxter were um, townships that were absorbed into the township of Georgian Bay in 19, uh, when we were formed in 1970 or whatever it was. And so I don't, it, we, we changed over from Freeman, Baxter, Ward, the three wards in uh, when we did our ward boundary review. So that was in 20, uh, whenever it was, it uh, passed, I guess, in 2014 or somewhere around then. So just a point of clarification that, um, it, we're not taking it sort of from another township effectively is my understanding. Thank you. <clears throat> CEO Gumby. Hi, just to clarify that point as well. Um, as Mr. Hobson said, he's still learning and that's totally fine. <laughs> the deeming bylaw is to deem a property not on a plan of subdivision. So the SRA can join with their property. It's nothing to do with taking it from a Freeman based address and making it a Georgian Bay. It's nothing to do with the address itself. Okay. Councillor Hazelton. 
<clears throat> so um, thank you, uh, Mayor. I, I wanted to just weigh in on a couple of things. Um, uh, we passed a bylaw a couple of years ago on Georgian Bay that stated to the effect that uh, if you're buying shore road allowance, the the uh, the front lot line, the water lot line, is the 177.4 contour, which is the high water mark of Georgian Bay. Prior to that, um, some people were being charged and buying water under the under the sorry land under the water, which we as a township really weren't entitled to sell, um, and it would have cost them a lot more money. Anyways, uh, with uh, we can certainly research the 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 fine print on that if you want. Um, what I'm concerned about here is this survey, which I understand was done prior to this bylaw being passed. Uh, this survey shows the elevation uh, separating part one and part two is 177.08 and not 177.4. So I would suggest that um, complying with our bylaw, the survey needs to reflect the 177.4 uh, line elevation, which is uh, what the bylaw currently states. Um, that would then further reduce the cost to the applicant um, and um, would align it with um, the, uh, the bylaw that uh, is currently in force. May I ask? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Mr. Von Brussel, I see your hand. You, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, I, yeah, it's a bit confusing to me. Um, well, there's two points that I, I'm wondering about. So as I'm understanding it, because of this bylaw, uh, the land will only extend to the high, the, the, the high water mark would be the highest point it's ever been. Is that correct? As opposed to, because it's it, the original water's edge, I guess whenever this was surveyed, way back that would have been where where the water level was is, is that i mean that's what it looks like to me the part one and part two uh, so it, as long i just want to understand this correctly part two is underwater at the moment i guess i guess that's what i'm asking and it's so it, the other question was uh if the bylaw came out if the bylaw was introduced at, after this was surveyed is that it, it doesn't really have a bearing on, on that it took place prior. In other words, so it, when the bylaw be, goes into effect, it, it, everything is updated to that point. See, Hopefully gonna... that was clear enough. <laughs> I, I definitely understood what you're saying, Mr. Van Brussel. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to my SRA days, um, it's not a it's not a bylaw, it's a policy. Whether the difference really makes that much of a difference in this case, but um, Van, Mr. Van Brussel is correct in the fact that the application was submitted in 2018 and the survey was already submitted. So this policy was changed as surveys submitted going forward. So I do not think that that policy has any bearing on this application to date, but moving forward since that policy was revised and adopted, moving forward from that date, all the surveys with the high watermark have to show the high watermark. Okay. Councilor Jarvis. I'm so confused. Uh, I asked for Councilor Hazelton's comments. The part one of the survey for which we are charging our, my constituent, I would indicate to me as per Councilor Hazelton's comments that he's paying for more land than he should be paying for because 177.4 is our high water mark, not 177.06 or 08. 08. Oh. Uh, I need clarification on that. We need clarification on that. I don't think we should be charging him more than is necessary for this. Okay. Councilor Bocek. Does seem to be a bit confusing. Um, <laughs> The, the time that the applicant submitted the application and the survey is paramount here to whether the policy uh, was in place. There is no bylaw uh, that, that says where the high water mark it, it, It's our policy. So if the application was received with the survey before that policy was put into place, then my understanding is we treat this application as of the date it was submitted. So 
Well, yes, yeah. I'm pretty sure we established our high water mark uh, well before 2018, but that's my assumption. I don't think we established the policy before 2018 of the new uh, high water mark. I guess we need clarification. Councilor Cooper? I think we need clarification on this because um, uh, basically we were selling land that didn't belong to the township previously and that's why we had the new policy and um, if we today even though the application came in in 2018 uh, if we today are selling something we don't own we may have an issue so um, I think it would behoove us to uh, defer this unfortunately until till we can get an answer from our legal counsel as to whether we should not or should I believe we shouldn't be selling land that we don't own and that's why we made the change so for what it's worth that those are my suggestions thank you I, I want to make one observation that i've noted is that even though this application originated in 2018 the survey was dated a couple of weeks ago april a month ago april 8th is the 2021 is the date of the survey so the water line that's being shown on the survey is probably somewhat approximate to what it is as we speak yeah um and you know i noticed that at 177.08 um my guess is that roughly where the water levels that have been this spring because it's a little bit below the, the maximum. Um, and CO Gunby, I, I, I'm, I'm trying with my memory, it may not be working as well as it should, but I thought what we, when we, we had modified our policy in selling shore road allowance to only that above water at the time of the um, sale, not necessarily to high water mark. The policy was revised in 2019 to reflect that we would only sell to the high water mark, but we okay. still own the land beyond the high water mark. So technically, Mr. Van Brussel could go ahead with his application today, or he could spend another 10 grand on a new survey to save $100. Well, that was going to be my next thing is that what the, the concern is here that Mr. Van Brussel might be spending an extra $1,000, and I'm just making up that number because I don't know what it would be, uh, on land below the high water mark, but if it costs them more than $1,000 to get that survey, um, it, it might be six of one, half dozen of another. And, and Mr. Van Brussel, I'll leave that to you <laughs> if you think it's worth it. If I can respond to that. Yeah, Please. I mean, I, I just would like to purchase the the, the, the frontage. And, and so, so I don't know what the route, so that's why we have to determine the, it seems to be, some question marks here right so but i mean obviously i don't want to pay for part two because this is this is per the square meter i believe yes. of of the of the of the area of, of of the dimensions of this area but i mean i either way i would like to purchase it but i i mean obviously i don't want to be paying for something that i can't that i guess technically i don't own so i guess that's what we got to determine right is 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 which is it part one that I'm, is, is this like the 8,000? I, I saw the figure earlier. Is that based on part one or is it based on part one and part two? I guess is my, my question. It's based on part one. Oh, okay. Ms. Way. I'd just like to know, cause there's been reference of going back and getting a legal opinion. All of these applications before they come forward to council are vetted and go through our legal counsel. They do their own due diligence and checking the land and title and ensuring that it follows the policies, ensuring that the right type of plan is registered, that we're only issuing the right type of, we're only selling, for instance, in this case, part one. And I think really what's the confusing part in this is the fact that this survey notes part one and part two that is under the water versus every other survey, for the most part, at least as long as I've been here, hasn't noted that portion under the land or under the water. So this conversation hasn't occurred previously. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's occurring for you, Mr. Van Brussel, but these all go through our legal counsel prior to them coming to council and they follow, you know, the letter of the law, they follow all of our procedures. So I don't believe there's any concern or need for us to go back to our legal counsel and ask to see if it's within our right to sell part one and delay this process for Mr. Van Brussel for another month. Councillor Cooper followed by Councillor Hazelton. <clears throat> I guess I'm of a mixed view in terms of holding this up. Uh, it's more and I don't want to hold up Mr. Van Brussel, but uh, it's my understanding that all surveys uh, uh, for the last at least two years, if not longer, I think it was actually put into place in 2014, 
would show the high water mark, not the water's edge. And we're not seeing that here. So I don't know how our legal department has uh, missed that, but uh, it's my understanding our bylaws say surveys should show the high water mark. And the, the other clarification that we need, I think, regardless of this particular application is uh, who owns the land under 177.4. It's my understanding it's crown or province, but um, I see CEO Cumbia is um, uh, here, so I'll shut up. Thank you. <laughs> CEO Gunby. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Cooper. Uh, through your worship, the policy in 2014 was not sure what allowance related. It was related to planning applications because at the time we didn't require surveys for planning applications. And in 2014, the new policy came out that we required surveys for certain planning applications and they had to show the high watermark, regardless of shore road allowance. In 2019, we revised the policy for shore road allowance completely separate from planning requirement surveys. And that one said that any new survey coming in will show the high watermark and we will only sell to the high watermark. So I think there's confusion about the two survey requirements not being aligned because they're not, they're two separate processes. If I could just respond, please. Uh, and we have a survey that was done this year that it doesn't show the high water mark, I'm afraid. So there you go. Councillor Hazelton. Yes, with, uh, <clears throat> with all due respect to our legal people, um, if they have reviewed this application and they have not identified the failure of the 177.4 to be shown on the survey, then I think we need to challenge them because they're probably looking at legalese and, and uh, wording uh, as opposed to uh, the actual details of the drawing. They're probably deferring that to others in the township to ensure their, uh, their accuracy. And uh, I would um, suggest very strongly that we challenge our legal to review this uh, and ensure that when they say it's approved, that they have understood and are confirming that the, the, uh, the policies that uh, we have in place are in fact being respected. Thank you. Okay, so now we're in, in, in a situation where I don't think any of us want uh, Mr. Von Brussel to uh, suffer the consequences of um, this confusion. Um, unfortunately, the survey that he provided uh, shows a, a little bit more land in part one than the high, wire, high water mark would have indicated, but we can only speculate without a survey or as to exactly where that modified line would go. Um, and, and so the question is, if I guess we have two options. One option is to um, sell part one to Mr. Von Brussel, re realizing that a little bit of it is actually um, not ours to sell, um, but which is a mistake we've been making for decades up until a couple of years ago, um, <laughs> or uh, ask that it get resurveyed with the 177.4 contour shown and uh, at that point, the um, recalculate the amount that is owed to us by Mr. Von Brussel. Councillor Douglas. Thank you. Um, I'd hate to see Mr. Von Brussel be disadvantaged here and, and held up. Surveys right now are, most surveyors are taking up to September to even get back out to properties. Um, if there's any way that we can make this happen for him today and if there's adjustments with an agreement from Mr. Von Brussel, uh, take care of it after the fact. I'm not sure, but I think it's a little unfair at this point to hold him up. Councillor Jarvis. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm in the same uh, boat, so to speak, excuse the pun, but um, <clears throat> I, obviously there's an error that's been made I, I don't think it's a deliberate error on anybody's part. I don't think the difference is going to be significant. I agree that uh, getting a new, you know, tasking um, Mr. Brussel with a new survey would be uh, expensive. Financial inconvenience. Um, 
Well, I'm wondering if we can, you know, vote on this as it is with the understanding that uh, our legal department review it and for future we make sure that we have uh, the correct um, information provided to us and obviously provided to landowners who are getting surveys. Uh, in this case, uh, again, I don't think there's a huge differential there. There's another line actually marked there is uh, on the local benchmark elevation of 177.9 which is a dotted line above the uh, 176 and 17706. So I suspect our high water mark is somewhere between those two lines. Um, and I'd be happy to go ahead with this as is. But again, with the understanding that our legal department review it and make sure that we don't have this type of thing come up in front of us again. I would, Councilor Cooper. Just uh, briefly, uh, it's, I'm a little surprised uh, the surveyor, uh, and if that survey was done this year, I'm really surprised that the surveyor wouldn't have done it, done the survey to the high water mark. Those are the criteria that are in the township of Georgia Bay. And uh, so that's a bit odd. And I just mentioned that for Mr. Van Brussel, but that for some reason your surveyor wasn't aware of, of the criteria that we, we have. So. Uh, perhaps uh, that surveyor would be uh, inclined after we, I, I would suggest we approve it since it's so minor, but I think it uh, would be helpful for you to go back to your surveyor and, and suggest uh, the, um, to comply with what our, our rules have been for at least two years. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna read the motion at this point. It reads, moved by Councillor Hazelton, seconded by Councillor Douglas. Be it resolved that council passes deeming bylaw 2021-029 to deem part of plan M413 in the former township of Freeman, now in the township of Georgian Bay, not to be registered plan of subdivision for the purpose of planning act RSO 1990 CP 13 S 53. And that council pass the closing bylaw 2021-030 to stop up, close and convey Part one of the original shore road allowance in front of lots 49 and 50, concession eight, part one, 35R-26478, Freeman, now in the township of Georgian Bay. All those in favor. And that is carried unanimously, it looks like. Mr. Von Brussel, I appreciate your patience um, and an understanding that uh, unbeknownst to you or us as we walked into this meeting that there would be this little extra confusion and yeah. uh, hopefully we we've all learned a little bit from it and we'll and hopefully our next applicant won't suffer from the the, the same challenge in the future um in, in this regard but thank you very much for your patience um the shore road allowance once you pay for it is yours thank, thank you all thank you And that, I believe, ends the public portion of our meeting for today. And under new business, the first item we have, and I believe Ms. Lemieux is gonna coordinate this, is the introduction of our new uh, planning consultants from the firm J.L. Richards. Ms. Lemieux. Good morning, everyone. I believe we're just bringing Jason and Sarah in now, so I'll just wait a moment before I get started. Oh, perfect, I see you both, okay, great. Uh, so I thought I would uh, start off today's meet and greet session. Uh, as council uh, is aware, I did send around uh, both Jason and Sarah's uh, CVs as well as a uh, brochure they provided um, about some general information about the firm. I believe I sent that um, a couple days ago. So hopefully you have been able to uh, take a look at that for some reference for today. Uh, so the, um, obviously we're, we're so excited to have Jason and Sarah here today to, to uh, give some face-to-face -face time to council um, of our new uh, planning consultants to help us uh, go through all these, um, you know, new projects and challenges that we, uh, we as a, Township are hoping to, uh, you know, really get through in the next few months. So we're really excited. Um, both Jason and Sarah are senior planners from JL Richards, and they are heading up um, the work for the township. 
So um, I was hoping to have both of them provide a general overview of their experience and qualifications uh, for council, and then have, um, you know, about five minutes each for each councillor to actually provide um, some overview uh, back to Jason and Sarah of uh, your ward and, uh, you know, the, the communities that you represent in, in your ward and, um, uh, you know, any, any other introductions you wish to provide. And then we can go into a, more of an open uh, Q&A session that uh, the mayor will be able to moderate for us um, to kind of keep things moving, but uh, definitely give everybody a chance to ask some questions and uh, get some good dialogue going. So uh, thanks everybody for um, understanding the format that we're gonna try and, and work with here today. So I will give or first to for Jason, I guess, and then and then Sarah can go and uh, and yeah. So thanks again, and um, we're you know obviously us as township staff are really excited. They've already been such a great help to us, and uh, we're really looking forward to the future. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much, Victoria, for that kind introduction, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Can everybody hear me okay this morning? My normal microphone and my headphones went down while I was in the uh, waiting room. So I'm going straight off laptop this morning. So just want to make sure it works. Thank you for that. Um, so I'll begin by introducing myself. My name is Jason Farragan. I'm a senior planner with JL Richards and Associates Limited. And I uh, have the pleasure of being joined by my colleague, Sarah Barreau, who will be um, introducing herself shortly. Um, we're happy to be here and have the opportunity to meet you all. Um, we really, I know I enjoyed the earlier discussion about shoreline road allowances. Those are often one of the most uh, confusing things that municipalities get to work with. So it was um, interesting to listen to that discussion. And I would say on behalf of our firm that we were very pleased to have been selected and to have the opportunity to assist mayor and council and administration with land use planning uh, within the township. Um, we're big believers that you know, Ontario is a very special place and um, it is both a privilege and an honor to have the ability to work with communities across the province as we do in helping them plan for better communities. Um, so a little bit on me, I guess. Uh, so as I sort of said, uh, I'm Jason. I currently live in uh, Sudbury, Ontario. I've been here for about 15 years. I've been practicing planning for approximately 23 years now. And I've been fortunate over the course of my career to have a wide range of experiences. So I started my career in the private sector with a consulting uh, firm in Toronto and had the opportunity to work in the GTHA in Quebec and into the US and Barbados uh, in that role. And approximately 15 years ago, I'm from Northern Ontario originally, and so was my wife. And we decided to move our family home uh, to Sudbury to raise our family. And since then, I've had the opportunity to work for the province of Ontario. I've worked for the city of Greater Sudbury as a senior planner for seven years. I've worked at Laurentian University, both as a professor for five years and a senior administrator for a year overseeing a very significant capital program for them. And approximately six years ago, I rejoined the city of Greater Sudbury to take the helm as the director of planning. And as part of that responsibility, I had the pleasure of leading 42 people that provided long range uh, current operations, as well as environmental planning services for uh, Sudbury. And if you don't know Sudbury uh, well, it's the largest municipality in Ontario. It's about 3,600 square kilometers in area. It's got about 330 lakes within the municipal boundaries that are greater than five hectares in size. So there's lots of similarities between, I think, Sudbury and Georgian Bay, which I'm looking forward to sort of exploring with you further. And then about seven months ago, I decided to make the move back to the private sector and join JL Richards and have the pleasure of serving there. Now as a senior planner, I currently work for both municipal clients and private clients across the province. And uh, my area of responsibility stretches all the way up from Capus Gasing over to the east and uh, again in Aquay right now. Uh, and of course, down into the Guelph area as well. So that's uh, me in a nutshell. And maybe Mr. Mayor, if it's okay with you, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Sarah, and Sarah can, uh, can introduce yourself as well. Thank you, Jason, and, and nice to see everyone today, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'm excited to be here uh, as well and working for the Township of Georgian Bay. Um, I've been working in Sudbury for the past 11 years with JL Richards, almost 11 years to the day. So it's kind of an exciting <laughs> time um, and recently became a senior planner and an associate with the firm. 
Uh, similar to Jason, I work in, in the private sector uh, doing development applications in some of our larger municipalities and actually kind of worked with Jason while he was at the city and I would be submitting applications to his department. Um, and now we're excited to have him on board on, on our staff working together in, in a new capacity. Um, as well as do work for a number of municipalities across northeastern Ontario, uh, similar to the role that we'll be taking on with the Township of Georgian Bay in reviewing development applications and providing recommendations to Council. So very excited to be here today and to learn uh, from, from members of Council what your concerns are, what kind of land development issues you're facing, uh, to be able to better inform our work with the municipality. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillors, anybody wish to int introduce Georgian Bay or parts of Georgian Township of Georgian Bay to uh, our new planning consultants? Councillor Bocek, followed by Councillor Rienko. Followed thank by you, Mr. Rest. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you both, uh, Jason and Sarah, for joining our team here in the Township of Georgian Bay. I represent a ward known as Ward 3, and I'll give you a little bit of uh, history when it comes to planning in my ward. My ward is basically what I see to be three very distinct and different um, ecosystems. We have one third of my, my ward is on Georgian Bay, part of Lake Huron, that what we known as Coastal Georgian Bay. But another third of my uh, waterfront residents live on man-made uh, lakes, uh, tributaries, etc. They live above Lock 45, which of course was dammed off in the early 1900s. And um, all the farmers' fields and all the farms and everything else went underwater and they made this new thing called Little Lake and Gloucester Pool. Um, so things are obviously quite different there than what they are on coastal Georgian Bay as far as the, um, the environment goes. And then to the north of, of my ward, we have natural lakes and natural rivers, which is Six Mile Lake, Gibson, part of Gibson Lake, and of course the Severn River. So um, very diverse in my ward. Um, we do have a community plan, which is embedded in the official plan for part of my ward. It's what I refer to as the Six Mile Lake community plan. Um, and I believe that the, the folks on Six Mile Lake are working towards um, introducing some, some changes to their, to their plan, as well as the Township of Georgian Bay, I believe, is, is looking at making some uh, changes, although they may be quite minor, to our official plan and our official plan bylaws moving forward. To both uh, consider the environment as our number one concern in not only our our planning documents, but in our strategic plan, and that um, we, we, we use uh, planning law to assist our residents in achieving what they'd like to achieve, but again, working within the, the bylaws of the township. So I'm looking really forward to working with you as I did with our past planning consultant firm that we had on board. They were very, very instrumental in uh, creating the documents we needed and, and, and getting uh, through the public process to bring us to where we are today. And, and I really hope that uh, we have a long lasting relationship with your firm um, and have some stability brought back into this township as far as planning issues go. So I appreciate you both and I'm glad to have you aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Oyenko followed by Councillor Cooper. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just, just to Councillor Bocek, <coughs> uh, your award uh, um, doesn't go into, into uh, Gibson Lake if, if you don't have Gibson Lake in your award. Anyway, this is a correction. Uh, welcome aboard, Jason and uh, Sarah. It's good to have you aboard. Um, a couple of questions. Um, as as Councillor Bocek has mentioned, uh, there are a number of um, community plans, uh, lake plans in our area. And I'm just wondering how familiar you are with these individual lake plans uh, in comparison to the overall official plans and bylaws we have. And have you been involved in any uh, lake associations uh, in, in, in developing a particular bylaws? That's my first question. 
Um, and my second question is, which one of you or both of you will be involved in a planning committee? I guess we had one coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. I'm just wondering how you propose to uh, uh, operate that committee. And just in um, finalizing my comments, uh, uh, are there plans for uh, any of you individuals to get some tours of our Georgian Bay coastline or some of our inland, larger inland lakes uh, to get a feel for what we have here and so on. If you, uh, Jason, as you said, you've had a lot of lakes in Sudbury, so obviously you know what they look like, but it's always nice to get out in the water and look at, this, look at the, the character of our lakes, which may be different than up in Sudbury. We have a high, much higher density, I think, down here than you would have. So are there any plans to get out in a boat and, and see these from the, sh from, from the water? So basically those three questions. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And perhaps I'll look to my colleague, Sarah, to, to supplement. Uh, so to the councillor, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, really appreciate the questions. Let's start with the funnest question first, and then we'll work our way backwards. Um, appreciate the comment about the tour. Sarah and I were, in fact, reflecting on that. Um, late last week, COVID is clearly presenting some challenges in terms of in-person uh, site visits, but our expectation would be that as soon as the most hopefully recent emergency orders are lifted within the next nine days that we'll have an opportunity to come up uh, or come down, excuse me, to the township and do begin the touring process, Councillor. Um, second question as it relates to uh, working with lake associations and lake plans, I would say that both Sarah and I have extensive experience working with community groups to help prepare policy documents that reflect both their aspirations and values. I think um, Certainly in Greater Sudbury, it's something that we see and it's something that we also see with a lot of our Northern clients. There's a high priority that is placed on uh, you know, preserving the natural environment and making sure that adequate protections are in place and land use planning documents support council's strategic vision, much like Georgian Bay uh, in terms of the natural environment. So I would say, yes, we definitely both have some good experience there that we can bring. And then the final question is your plan. Yeah, it's a really impressive document. We've been through it now a couple of times. Clearly, we're still learning the plan. Um, importantly, you know, our experience tells us that, you know, the administration and how the plan is interpreted is very important. So we're in the midst of learning those policy documents and, and as importantly, learning um, how the township currently administers the document. And that will be a learning process. And I expect that that will continue in sort of the coming months. Um, and then I think there was another question there about attendance at meetings. I, my expectation is from a customer service perspective that you will see both myself uh, and Sarah alternate at meetings uh, as our availabilities permit and as the files dictate. So Sarah will be leading some files on behalf of the township and I'll be leading others. Uh, and it depends on the file, the, the level of complexity associated with the file and our workload on our end. We are very keen to ensure that we're providing you guys with a great level of service. And that's why you're seeing both Sarah and I here today is to ensure that we have some redundancy uh, in the services that we're offering to you. So hopefully that answers uh, the question, Councillor, but I'm, but I'm happy to, to sort of take some follow up. Thank you very much. Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I just wanted to say um, thank you very much for your presentation, both Jason and Sarah. Um, and Jason, I just wanted to comment. Uh, I see behind your wonderful face, a happy face there, a Canadian shield. This is important to us. <laughs> very important <laughs> indeed. And I just wanted to say I, I'm, I, I doubt that's Georgia Bay, but maybe it is, um, but it could be one of the lakes up in the Sudbury area as well. So um, I, I'm a little bit familiar with the area when I, before I started university, I actually worked in Creighton Mine as a diamond oh, wow. driller for, for a year or so, or a little less than a year. So I know your area. Anyway, um, uh, I just wanted to uh, ask a, a question at the end, but it, just a bit of a background for the township and our area. I, I think you're well aware of this, but I sort of divide Georgian Bay up into three areas. There's, there's um, essentially the uh, west side of Georgian Bay, which is um, uh, the Bruce Peninsula and a different 
type of geology. So I'm talking here ge geology because I think it's pretty important to our story. Um, Southern Georgian Bay that runs sort of from Collingwood, shall we say, over South Collingwood over to and including parts of actually uh, Severn Sound. Uh, the geology is mostly uh, sedimentary versus metamorphic, I think, in, in the uh, Bruce Peninsula. And then we have igneous um, when we start somewhere in Honey Harbor in spots, a few, you know, little areas and so forth. The north end of Bosley Island is really where things transition significantly. Uh, not that the there isn't Canadian shield underneath some of these parts, but um, it becomes more, shall we say, windswept once you get to the north end of Bosley Island. And up the entire shoreline of Georgian Bay, it's essentially Canadian shield. And the other point I would make is that uh, it's also uh, some parts of Honey Harbor um, uh, and and uh, I'd say the majority of Honey Harbor and everything north of there uh, is 99% water access, which is a, a key element to this um, particular township. Um, we have some water access uh, um, residences in the inland lakes, particularly Go Home Lake, um, but um, and a few at uh, Six Mile Lake, but I think generally speaking, uh, we sort of have those two kind of categories, uh, road access with waterfront and or water access. So I'm, I'm uh, involved <laughs> with the entire township, but I represent uh, wards two and four, which are I, we call coastal Georgia Bay, the, the sort of Bear Canadian Shield area that I was describing. And um, uh, I, I think it's uh, important to know a couple of things about that area. Uh, most of the, uh, not the earliest community plans, but the majority of the community plans are within our township are in coastal Georgia Bay. Uh, there's a plan in Honey Harbor, which uh, is an official, uh, sorry, has an OP, but uh, as I understand it, no zoning bylaws. And then as you go north, uh, there's a number of communities including Cognachine, Go Home Bay, and Wawatasi all have their own community plans. And they're, the, those three, last three that I mentioned are very similar. Uh, there's probably, they're not quite cookie cutter, but they're pretty close. Um, and I think uh, the, uh, the idea is that uh, in order to understand the water access community, I, I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, it really is a different sort of um, lifestyle uh, and, uh, and the people that are generally in the area are uh, very inclined to ensuring that the vistas are protected, that it's not the built form that's celebrated, it's quite the opposite. And if you can hide your uh, cottage or plant some trees and, and hide your, your residence somehow. Um, I think that's celebrated more than, than what we might see elsewhere in parts of cottage country where tour boats are going by and saying there's where Goldie Hawn lives. Um, I, I think we're kind of on the other side of that. It, it's uh, Everybody's pretty quiet about uh, what we're doing out there. We're very concerned about water quality and uh, development, of course, has a big impact on that, and, and as does intensification. And so I think uh, I, I wanted to point that out. I was also about to tell you that I, I uh, do sit on the District of Muskoka uh, uh, Council, so I represent that area at the District of Muskoka, just to explain to you if you need uh, me to answer any questions around that, but I'm happy to do that. I guess one of the things, the question I had for you both was, um, uh, you've talked about how you've worked with both municipalities and with um, uh, private developers, shall we say. Um, and, and then when you were referencing what work you're gonna be involved in, and, and I, I, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm assuming your role is gonna be similar to the role that we've had with the previous consultants to assist us with the uh, various, applications, but uh, not not just uh, subdivision developments, but any development where there's a, a need for your expertise. Um, so I wanted to get clarification around that, if that's how you see your role. And also we do have some uh, work to do with respect to our 
uh, not so much our official plan, but our zoning bylaws, we need some, some uh, tweaking. And uh, I, I just wanted to know what sort of uh, experience you have with that and, and, uh, and, and if you're going to be involved with those kind of uh, roles. So that's a little bit about um, the area that I was describing uh, out in the Canadian Shield on, on Georgian Bay. And thank you. And I, I have, <laughs> there are two other councillors from the area, so they may want to um, uh, say something, but that's just my sort of uh, brief summary of what we are talking about. Thank you. So could you answer just that one question, by the way, in terms of development applications and your role? So, so through you, Mr. Mayor, we, we'd be happy to, we appreciate and would be happy to answer the question, but I'd, I'd also look to Ms. Lemieux to perhaps supplement what administration's vision is for, for our role with the assistance uh, that we're here to provide. But um, uh, we are currently assisting uh, Victoria and her team with a number of development applications, not necessarily just subdivision applications, as Councillor Cooper has mentioned, but a wide variety of applications. So I think we currently have five pre-consultation uh, applications that we're assisting with. In fact, I have a meeting uh, on one on Thursday afternoon, um, and I believe there's three or four development applications that Ms. Lemieux has asked us to begin to sort of review and, and jump in on. Um, so we're currently helping at that level. Um, our game plan generally as a, as a company, as I mentioned earlier, is, is to be here to assist you in any way that we can. Um, we see ourselves, I think earlier, one of the councillors had mentioned, you know, welcome to the Georgian Bay team. We certainly see ourselves as being part of the team and we're here to provide whatever support and assistance to Ms. Lemieux as she requires. But maybe I'll defer to Ms. Lemieux to, to sort of round out my answer. Uh, thank you, through your worship. Uh, that's a great question and um, Jason's correct. So at this time, obviously, um, we're excited to have both Jason and Sarah attend our next planning committee meeting. Um, and I believe Councillor Bianco was uh, mentioning that before too, um, to make sure, you know, we, we get a great introduction in place and um, a well-rounded, um, you know, kind of regrouping of the committee as it's, you know, as a whole and also understanding that we are bringing in some new expertise into the team. So that's definitely gonna be required. And we have been um, providing some site specific files to JL Richards. And a big part of that is to also, you know, I feel it's important that both Jason and Sarah get to experience site specific issues and concerns um, and whatnot, because that's also gonna help them provide council with the best, you know, expertise and, um, assistance when it comes to some potential policy changes and updates, things like that through the planning committee. So, um, you know, at, at this time, they're going to be helping kind of, you know, in both lanes for us as staff, because A, we do just need the help with timing of the year. Um, and also because I do think it's going to allow them to do the best work that they're able to provide to council um, by getting kind of right in the deep end with us with some of these projects. So um, definitely kind of a well-rounded, um, opportunity for them to to help us out in in many ways but we do really foresee that that work is going to help them um, really help guide that planning committee and and get those tasks done that council and uh, planning committee really want to see done you know in the next in the next year so really excited about that but hopefully that uh, answers some questions for councillor Cooper and councillor Rianco. If I could just briefly follow up with that mayor mayor Kutzier please Briefly, because I like everybody else to get a chance to. I, I understand, um, and and really uh, thank you, Victoria. I just uh, I, I um, also wanted to offer a couple of things. One is that uh, when we do get to the point of uh, having the opportunity to tour the bay, I'd be more than pleased to uh, uh, take you through parts of uh, Georgian Bay, really from top to bottom. Could meet you at the top up in Tallmall Bay and. And take you around and and uh, I know we have some new staff as well so happy to do that but I did want to ask a uh, sort of a follow-up in, in terms of what uh, uh, Victoria was saying is um, I know that you've reviewed our community plans and and I I don't really want to uh, belabor this point but we've we've had um, some challenges at the township of Georgian Bay not I think we have wonderful official plan and, and et cetera, but we've had some challenges with respect to quite a number of LPAT and OMB hearings. And I, I think it would be 
sort of uh, helpful to you, at least understanding what the history is there so we can avoid this. We, we've spent a lot of time at LPAD and, and frankly, it would be great if we could uh, spend quite a bit less time there. So um, I'm, I'm just making that suggestion that uh, it would be uh, e exceedingly um, helpful if you had that opportunity to see where we ended up in the glue, as it were. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I don't know if I got the hands in order, but I have on my list Councillor Hazelton, followed by Councillor Douglas, followed by Councillor Jarvis. Actually, I saw Stephen's hand up before mine, so uh, you want to go first? I, I knew I'd get it wrong. <laughs> I'll take it away. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, nice to uh, to meet you uh, digitally, virtually here, um, and welcome to the team. Um, as uh, similar to uh, Councillor Cooper, um, I have uh, an open extended offer for a tour of Ward 4, uh, Honey Harbor, um, through um, Vict Victoria and her team. Um, and I have a somewhat large pontoon boat that uh, is ideal for putting around and, and seeing things. So uh, even in COVID times, we could probably arrange something like that. So I just wanted to confirm and re, re, uh, refresh that uh, offer. Um, much of what I might have wanted to say, I think, has, has been said, except that um, what causes me and, and my residents probably the, the greatest concern is we read our official plan uh, as lay people, not experts. And there appears to be lots and lots of strong language in there <clears throat> that aligns with our strategic direction in the township of environment first. Um, but we keep, uh, it seems that um, applicants or other planners keep finding holes uh, and are able to bypass all this good language in the official plan. And that creates enormous frustration in the community. And so we're trying to figure out, at least we, as I say, in the community and myself, we're trying to figure out um, how is it that these rich, positive uh words in our official plan uh, can be bypassed? Or do we need to do something different and actually uh, explicitly reflect all of these good statements in the official plan in bylaws so that we don't have these holes? And so if there's kind of one thing I would put out there uh, and ask for your help with uh, is how do we uh, leverage defend and use this official plan that has such rich language in it that just doesn't seem to be carried forward when we end up considering individual applications. So I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that and thank you very much. And by the way, that was not a question I'm asking for an answer today at all. It's just, it's somewhat rhetorical today, but uh, going forward, uh, in working sessions, I would certainly welcome opportunities to discuss that further with you. I, I can assure you it won't be rhetorical in the future. <laughs> um, Councillor uh, Douglas, followed by Councillor Jarvis, please. Thank you, Mayor Kutsi, and uh, welcome, Sarah and Jason. Uh, we're looking forward to working together with you. Um, there's a lot being said by my fellow councillors, so I, I won't repeat, and a lot of very good questions and uh, comments. Um, I'm with Ward 1, which is uh, covers the village of Mactir down through some of the inland lakes. Uh, we do not have in my ward um, community plans, so it's a little more straightforward from our official plan when it comes to uh, planning documents um, and applications. Um, presently, we only have one uh, development going on in Mactir, which is land base as well as waterfront, uh, which has... Uh, seen its challenges along the way and has taken a long time to get there. Um, I too would like to offer to you anytime you'd like to take a trip on uh, one of the inland lakes, we'll specifically go home lake because I live on go home lake and I can offer you uh, that opportunity to see how that particular lake is uh, reflective about some of our inland lakes and how they were built 
Um, the homes were built uh, 60 years ago for most of them, you know, 50, 60 years ago. I think our challenges that you're going to see on some of the inland lakes um, in Ward 1 is that a lot of these, these homes, including my own, were built very, very close to the water. So redevelopment um, or any kind of development on those particular properties is quite a challenge. Um, most of them do not meet the setbacks. And, you know, this is a, you know, how to, how to develop or redevelop uh, within an environmentally conscious way is something that's, um, you know, that we've been work, uh, working on. But um, aside from that, welcome. And uh, I look forward to having an opportunity to meet you on the water and, and get you out into our township. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jarvis. Yeah, I do welcome uh, you guys aboard. Um, Jason, I hope your uh, term with Laurentian University is not uh, any reflection on what's currently going on up there. Uh, I feel sorry for that institution. Um, and, uh, you know, a great place and a, a great institution, as a matter of fact, so I'm sorry to see that going on. Um, I don't have much to add as well. I think you mentioned, uh, Jason, that you guys had listened in on that uh, show road allowance application that came uh, before you guys were... Uh, presented to us and and you can see the little things that tend to get in the way of us getting things done in an efficient manner um, by virtue of that one by itself is a perfect example. Um, you'll be well aware that Georgia Bay suffers doesn't suffer, but it has this amazing ability to change its water level uh, by a meter or two meters at times uh, and it's a huge challenge uh, on many occasions since every application is basically unique and that's really the huge issue that we have to deal with from a planning standpoint on a regular basis is that you can't treat one application the same way as any other application um, that makes the bay area which is my ward i'm water access almost totally water access community in my ward and um, makes it very very different uh, from other wards uh, for that reason um, but it just highlights the uniqueness of the municipality and that we've got such significant differences between things, places like the village of McTeer and um, the area in which I, uh, I cottage. I, I, um, I do, I want to, I'm at risk of repeating what's already been said, but it's, it's a crucial issue for us to make sure that our plan, uh, our OPs are looked at closely when anything is being done, planned, uh, proposed the traditional built form uh has for many years been totally respected because that's what people want when they come up to this area yet there are those that seem to think that they want to stand out and you can't dictate what somebody builds on their property to a large extent except within the bylaws we've provided and um we've got to work with that obviously in mind all the time um, again, I welcome you guys on board, uh, and I, I think Victoria runs a great planning department right now, and uh, this will be a great addition. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll just add a, a few extra remarks myself. I mean, as I think you're hearing from uh, the other councillors, um, Georgian Bay is a um, an interesting place. Uh, one of the things that makes us unique compared to the great majority of municipalities is that uh, almost, and I don't know, the, we'll never know the exact number, but al almost exactly half of our properties, our residences are water access only. It's something that the province doesn't grasp in many of the rules and policies that they make that, and, 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 and with the exception of a couple of municipalities to our no north, very few other municipalities have such a high percentage of, of water access only. It's a significant factor. Um, we're also, we have, and, and the numbers vary, but roughly 85%, maybe as high as 90%, but at least 85% of our residents are seasonal. But how you define seasonal is a huge challenge because more and more people are trying to retire to their cottage or spending three seasons here out of four much of the time. Like it's, it's, it's a very gray area, but, when, when we say seasonal, it's because their tax returns are mailed to their other address because they don't want people come to Georgian Bay to try to get away from all that stuff. Um, the other thing I think that's, that's key to understand is that we have more and more people 
who are coming to our township who want to build homes versus cottages. And the, 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 the home builder often has a different attitude than the cottage builder, and I'm not faulting one or the other, but you know, many of us have been around here long enough to remember a, a cottage of a thousand square feet would be considered a big cottage. Uh, and now people think a home of 3,000 square feet is a small home. It, it, so we have those challenges um, and, and trying to balance that is, is um, a challenge. As, as uh, Councillor Jarvis making some reference to, we have a significant portion of our current existing residences, our current buildings are grandfathered. In other words, they wouldn't be allowed under the current uh, system, the current official plan. I, I, I'd venture to guess, if not all of us, six out of seven of us anyway of, this, of these councillors in front of you have grandfathered properties in one way or another. Um, and it, so it's, it's tough sometimes to say no to somebody, even though they can point to three or four neighbors uh, and, and within sight to have something, but you have to say, well, yeah, but we know more now and we're trying to make, put in restrictions that some of us wish existed, you know, 20 years ago or 50 years ago. Um, and that, that's all part of the challenge we face and with every application. There's a different geographic uh, situation. Um, you know, we don't have the cookie cutter lots that you find in some sur uh, suburban build out of, of, of many of the cities to our south. Um, in almost everyone, there's a personal story that is attached to it, often with some passion, because people tend to keep their cottage properties longer than their properties in the city. And, and, and so it's, um, it's a balancing act. Uh, and there's no question that all of us value the environment and we want to minimize the harm we do to the environment around us. Um, uh, but we also don't want to break hearts of people who want to retire to, to their what was their cottage, make it their home, have space for all their grandchildren. And they're all understandable stories. So drawing the line is the challenge. And, and um, you see, and some, and some people respect that and some have a little more challenge with the challenge. I know I shouldn't be using that word repetitively, but it's a wonderful area. All of us would be very happy to introduce you to parts of the area or all of the area. Um, and um, but I, I think it's, um, I, I hope you enjoy your work with us. We're looking forward to working with you and, and you, you get, you're gaining a greater appreciation of um, our township. Um, Councillor Wienkel, you wanna add a little extra to it? Yes, I just want to. I just want to be blunt uh, with our new um, planning consultants. Um, as Councillor Hazelton had indicated, that you know people are finding holes in our regulations. I think that's partly the the, the problem. The other problem is that people uh, look at our regulations, our planning regulations, as guidelines, and they're all wishing to push those guidelines. You know consider them as general guidelines. And we as a counselor have recently decided we want to push back. So we've gone to hire your group and we made it very clear to our own plan is that we are going to be pushing hard. So we want to be very conservative on our approvals of, of uh, uh, applications going forward and less liberal. So I think I'm hoping that you people will apply our regulations as they're stated, push back where you can. And if we happen to go the LPAT, so be it. I'd rather go there uh, with uh, a good case for pushing back than there is being liberal. So I just want to make quite, quite clear that uh, the future of any planning uh, uh, employees in our township will be based on, on, a, on a more conservative approach than it has in the past. Just wanted to put that out there. Councilor Wankel, you're getting the thumbs up. And I was just going to say, I think the Councilor Wankel speaking on behalf of all of us is that uh, while we fully respect that in some cases variances are appropriate, um, they should be a minor variance, not a, you know, significant build out, if I can call it that. Well, I'm going to say thank you very much. We really appreciate uh, you coming to, uh, to us today, so to speak, electronically. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to working with you. And I don't know if you want to throw in any last closing words before we move on to the next item on our agenda. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. Maybe I'll defer to my colleague, Sarah, and then I'll, then I'll sort of provide a final perspective if I could, please. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you very much for, for all of the comments from the council and, and Mr. Mayor. Um, it was interesting to hear kind of the different perspectives from your wards while also having that similar, um, you know, importance of the environment kind of uh, highlighted from, from all of council. I think just kind of generally, I mean, you've touched on a few points that I think we'll be taking back and thinking about when we review applications for the municipality. One of the things that's always interesting about planning is when we write policies, you want to um, have, you know, potentially have some flexibility, maybe not. It sounds like here we want kind of more black and white. Is this permitted? Isn't this permitted? And I think that's maybe some of the things we'll be looking at in your policies to do things like avoiding LPAT or making it very clear your stance on certain types of, of development. Where things are black and white, it's, it's more difficult to have someone on each side of the issue arguing um, the same policy saying this permits the development, this doesn't permit the development. So I think that those are things that we'll look at as we review development applications to try and identify, okay, maybe this could be tightened up a little bit more to achieve uh, the goals of the municipality. Definitely um, heard the challenge about grandfathering um, properties. That's, you know, we encounter that up here too with some of the municipalities that we work for on waterfront development. And th those are setbacks that have been um, evolving over the years to push development further and further back from, from the waterfront to be able to provide, protect those environments. So those are certainly challenges that we're used to, used to working with. And again, having those clear and um, tight kind of policies that indicate where a minor variance might be appropriate to reduce some of those setbacks or where, no, that's, that's the rule and that's the hard and fast rule. Um, that'll help us in reviewing development applications and, and help the township on a go forward basis. Um, one thing I just maybe wanted to ask council if that's okay, um, just thinking about the comment, uh, Mr. Mayor, about conversions of properties from um, seasonal to residential or to permanent uh, use is, um, have you seen more of that maybe over the last year, especially with people perhaps um, living in the community a little bit more during COVID times? I would, I would make two comments to that. One is absolutely we're, we're more conscious of people being here longer. And one little example that proves it, in the past, uh, the, uh, the uh, solid waste, the garbage services that were provided would start sometime in May. Well, now we have people in April saying, where do I put my garbage? And that didn't used to happen. Um, I think we have over the last fair number of years seen a fair number of applications for people wanting to build homes where cottages once stood. I, I don't think, I think we've barely seen the start of the applications that I suspect are gonna come in over the next um, year or two, because a lot of properties have changed hands the past year. Uh, the, the real estate market in our area has also been booming like it has in other parts of the province. And I, I suspect we are going to see a whole slew of applications in the next couple of years, which is why, um, you know, reinforcing our policies and, and setting a standard, I think is very important to do um, so that people understand that, uh, shall we say, we have limits. Thank you. And Thank you. maybe just one kind of follow up comment um, to that is I think in our initial review of some of the um, applications and pre consultation and going through the planning documents, I mean, they're very thorough. So there is a lot of oversight and kind of that importance of the environment and uh, preparing studies and that kind of thing in the plan. Um, so I think we will see that coming out in our development review. And I think that's, that is, um, like you said, those positive um, environmental uh, stance is, is in there. It's just making sure that that's followed up on in, in the decisions and the recommendations. So I think maybe yeah. I'll pass it over to uh, Jason. I appreciate that, Sarah. Thanks. I think um, what I just wanted to say as well was to express some appreciation uh, for everybody spending some time with us this morning. Um, for me, a big, a big part of planning, and I know this for Sarah as well, planning is about getting clear on expectations with each other. And so this morning, listening to your perspectives, it's helped us get clear in terms of what your expectations are as council leaders of the community and for the, the types of outcomes that you hope to see 
over time. So we appreciate you uh, sharing that perspective with us. Uh, we look forward to the many conversations that we will have uh, around planning issues in the community. And again, you know, on behalf of Sarah and myself and the team at JLR, thank you. We're, we're happy to be here and we look forward, I think, as was said earlier, to a long and productive working relationship together. So thank you very much. And thank you. We appreciate it. Councillor Wienko, um, could you please chair the meeting for the next item on uh, the Georgian Bay Land Trust Shore Road Allowance uh, presented by Councillor Cooper? Okay, um, to finish up uh, <clears throat> other business, uh, there's one other issue that we need to uh, address and it's uh, to do with the Georgian Bay Trust uh, reimbursement uh, for some land, uh, uh, shoreline, shoreline or I guess shore road, uh, shore line. Anyway, it's uh, to do with uh, Councillor Cooper. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Wienko. Um, <laughs> I, I agreed to uh, bring this forward because it's sort of a, a matter that's been um, hanging out there for some time. I believe the land uh, was actually donated quite some time ago. And I guess uh, the, so I said I'd uh, try and bring this forth to council so that we could get this closed off uh, with respect to the shore road allowance. And, and the reason that the land trust uh, was not gifted the shore road allowance was that the uh, donor uh, donated the land didn't have own the shore road allowance. This should be pretty obvious it's in the report but I uh, just wanted to, to mention that and um, there the, the other point I would make is that this land is a fairly large and linear piece of land it's not in the report but it's it's 12 acres I believe and and it's a, a tremendous amount of shoreline uh, in a, a bay called Longwissa Bay, which is a bay that is an anchorage for a number of our uh, transient um, boaters that come into um, the near the Muskosh River in, in our area. So um, I just uh, think it would the reason that the land trust is is uh, asking to have this land uh, adjoined is that uh, there have been problems um, stewarding the land from the perspective of protecting the area because it's it's not a public piece of property. Some of the land trust properties are, but this is actually very sensitive. There's uh, wetlands. Um, in fact, the, 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 to the west, it's bordered by a very large uh, provincial area and, and also to the north. Um, it's a very, very big sort of tracts of land that are protected and uh, a lot of wetland around not at not so much at the shoreline, but some. And uh, th what they want to be able to do is be able to put up their uh, signs regarding uh, not trespassing and respecting and being careful about the environment. So that's the reason for the ask. And I went to just to clarify uh, some of the report is is um, is my words, but the the resolution was drafted by staff. Uh, to try and get this matter taken care of. So the request is uh, to donate the shore road allowance. Um, uh, if you want me to read, I can read it, but basically that, and also to support the land trust who, who uh, you know, they're, they're a charity, they don't have a lot of money. And uh, so they'll, they'll need some assistance also making sure that, the, um, that there is a survey for the shore road allowance. The, the, there is a short survey and uh, survey sketch inland. There's no development requirements here. So I'm not, I, I guess uh, it, we have technically, we asked to have a survey of the shore road allowance. Um, and uh, so the request also, this was another suggestion by staff that uh, the township support the land trust uh, in terms of uh, helping with the survey as well. So that's, uh, I, I, uh, I think that's a summary more or less of, of um, of this particular request. Thank you. I see a hand up, uh, Karen, do you have a comment on this? Yes, yeah, sorry, if I could just provide some clarification. I have the minutes from when this originally came to council in 2016. And I would just like to be able to read the information that was noted at the time, just so we have the full history. Um, so at the time it was noted that the Georgia Bay Land Trust has requested that council waive the purchase price of shore road allowance surrounding their recently acquired property at 23046 Georgian Bay Shore. 
as they estimate it would cost up to $95,000, the exact area of land and price to be waived cannot be determined until such time as the survey is completed. They will raise the funds for the application, legal and survey fees, but before the dedicated time and funds to do that, before they dedicate time and funds to do that, they would like to know if council will waive the purchase price as they have waived fees for them in the past. Mrs. Gumby clarified that the estimated purchase price was closer to 45,000, not 95,000. The resolution that was carried then reads, be it resolved that council waive the purchase price of the Shore Road Allowance SRA for the Georgian Bay Land Trust for the SRA adjacent to 23046 Georgian Bay Shore, but not the application fees. So this was a previous direction provided by council and I believe it's uh, Councillor Cooper's request based off of, um, I think current engagements with Georgian Bay Land Trust as staff have also received some inquiries about this moving forward with them being able to purchase their short road allowance. So that's the history that came forward in 2016. And at this point in time, no survey has been completed. So you're saying we've already addressed this issue uh, previously? For the purchase price specifically, and the fact that they would be responsible for for the application fees, uh, which include the legal costs and the survey costs, um, but that we would waive the purchase price. And I believe now they're asking that we refund them the legal fees and the survey cost or cover the legal fees and then refund the survey cost is the way in which the okay. resolution. Yeah. I don't know who to address it to you, uh, Karen, or to uh, our planning staff or even Jessica. Um, I'm surprised, like I, I have no problem discussing this issue, but I'm just surprised that it, it came from a counselor and not from the, uh, uh, the land trust themselves directly. Um, I, I've, I've never gone out and represented another organization uh, on this. And I think it's, I don't know if it's a good, bad precedent to have counselors representing other organizations where the organization should rep represent themselves. I, I see you've got your screen on there, uh, uh, CEO uh, Gumby. What, what's our policy on this? Uh, thanks, Chair. We do not have a policy on this whatsoever. Councillors bring forward matters for communities, for groups, for different associations often just to get it on the council table because it's, this is one of the reasons, but it's quicker to have a councillor do it than to book a delegation for a committee of the whole meeting and then have something ratified maybe at the next meeting and maybe a member of council doesn't end up pulling the item to put on the agenda. So this is also, um, I guess, a quicker way to do it, but we don't have a policy on what resolutions can come forward. Okay, any other comments? Councillor Cooper? Thank you, uh, Ch Chair Wianco. A couple of things. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we as council bring forward all sorts of things, including um, recommendations about various organizations in which we're involved. So I don't think this is something that's terribly new. Um, I uh, agreed, as I said, to bring this forward to try and help the land trust, but also uh, was advised by our CAO that, that uh, this was fine. In fact, the CAO helped write some of this uh, resolution. And uh, um, uh, I think the uh, other aspect was that, uh, and I'd, I'd like the CAO to comment on this, but uh, as a lot of the wording did come from her, she, she did suggest that uh, uh, given the circumstances, maybe the um, township would support uh, waiving so those other fees uh, as well, or not waiving them, but rather um, um, uh, covering them. So. If uh, CAO Gumby could comment on that, at least that's uh, that was sort of my take on it when we had this discussion at the time. Thank you. Sure, I can comment on that. I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I assisted writing the resolution because I knew exactly what Councillor Cooper was asking for, and I wanted everything to be covered in one resolution instead of different ones from, for instance, five years ago and then one today. <laughs> so I am um, I am ashamed to say I do not remember this conversation at Council whatsoever. So it's the first time I've admitted I can't remember one of those things. And um, so I wouldn't say that uh, staff support reimbursing the cost of a survey, but that is something that Councillor Cooper said during our discussion. So I included it in the resolution. I thought surveys were about 8,000, but I think that Mr. Hobson advised he was talking to the land trust and they said it would be about 15,000. I've had no direct conversation with the land trust about this matter. 
Councillor Borchett. Thank you, uh, Acting Chair Wienkel. Um, just so that I have this straight, five years ago, the Land Trust came to us and asked us to waive the X number of dollars per square meter. So basically we were gifting the shore road allowance to the Land Trust. And at that time there was an agreement that they would pay for the survey and the application fees. And based on that, um, it sounds like we agreed to gift them the land. But five years later, now the story's changed. And now they want us to gift them the cost of the survey as, as, as well as other fees, the application fees. So um, I don't know, it sounds like a gift, you're looking a gift horse in the mouth. I'm not sure this is a bad idea because I would like to see the Georgian Bay Land Trust bring this into their fold, um, especially in that bay because boaters love to let their dogs relieve themselves on the township property. But if it's not township property more anymore, it can be signed and people will keep off it. So I'm in a little conundrum here and um, I just find it odd that somebody would come back after making an arrangement and an agreement and then reneging on their part of it and then asking us for more. That's the only thing that I'm a little leery of. Councillor Cooper, then Councillor Doug Douglas. Yeah, but look, I understand the, the change from 2016 to today, and I, I guess one of the ways I can describe this is that uh, the land trust has given a lot of land, uh, has been over a number of years and and very rarely has expenses of this of this amount related to a transaction um, and um, I mean there have been some acquisition but very very rare this is valuable land and they do own the land behind the short road allowance uh, I can say that the land trust is not in the position to be either acquiring the land or paying the legal fees uh, today. They would uh, simply forego that, but the problem with foregoing that is they can't enforce the stewardship of this land and the wetlands behind it and so forth. So there's the, there's the conundrum, Brian, uh, Councillor Bocek, that, that uh, they're in. They just simply uh, are not in the position to put that money forth relative to this strip of land. So um, the other thing, I guess we could do, I don't know what our lawyers would say, and I've said, I, I really, uh, we already have what is something that's sort of like a survey, it's a sketch, but it shows, um, it was done by a surveyor, it's a surveyor's sketch, and uh, we do have something available along those lines that, that might uh, suffice, but um, I, I can guarantee you that the land trust will just then um, back away and not, um, go forward with this. That's what I'm being told by the land trust. So uh, it's up to us to say yay or nay as to whether we should support this. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cooper. That's a, a very adequate explanation and that's what I was looking for. Thank you. Councillor Douglas, followed by Councillor Javis. Thank you, Chair Wienko. Um, you know, the land trust, uh, the Georgian Bay Land Trust is a very valuable um, nonprofit, in my opinion. And I think what they're doing is for our future, you know, for our kids to protect the lands out in Georgian Bay. Uh, and I, it's very admirable how far they've come and how many donations they actually get. I, I'm very much in support of this. Um, I would hope that the lawyers and the surveyors may keep in mind, should we pass this, perhaps be a little more generous with their fees. But uh, I, you know, I applaud the uh, Georgian Bay Trust for the, their, their work and, and I think uh, having it signed would be the best way to protect it going forward and, and I'd hate to see that not happen. Um, so I'm very much in support of uh, supporting this resolution. Councillor Javis? Yeah, of course I would support the resolution in many ways, but I'm really kind of confused. Um, I, I mean, this, this is not the first situation where the land trust is, has 
been given land, and I presume it's not the first situation where the land trust has been given land, but a short road allowance is not part of that original uh, gifting and, and therefore has to be purchased. I'm, I'm curious to know if we have anything on record that would ha help us better understand how we should be moving forward on this and perhaps our CAO might be able to help out. <laughs> she just came on the screen. Uh, I'm kind of hoping she can. Well, I'll try. Uh, so what we did through you, Chair, is um, as it states in Councillor Cooper's uh, report, is that while I don't know the exact year, we did pass a resolution that stated we would waive all of the fees for the land trust for all future uh, rezoning applications when they did take over properties uh, that were zoned shoreline residential, for instance. Uh, during my tenure here, I do not recall ever having them take over a property that didn't already own the shore road allowance. I think that may have been something that they may have worked on in an agreement form with the property owner to make sure they bought the shore road allowance before they were gifted the property. I can't comment if that's how it was, but this is the first time we've come across this. Okay, so so waiving fee, I saw that too. So waiving fees, I understand. I mean, that's no no big deal. It's the additional cost of reimbursing for the the survey and and the uh, yeah, the survey basically. And okay, so we're dealing with, again once again as we always seem to be dealing with is unique situations. Uh, uh, Karen, yes, you're on mute. Thanks, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, I don't even know who to address right now. Uh, through Chair Way and Go, um, I would just like to know that because there is some outward cost, like most of this, as we've established, is us just waiving our fees and not accepting that payment, which is fine. Um, but the survey costs and the legal costs are tangible items we do have to fund, um, and that they be paid for through the working fund reserve. Um, I don't know if there needs to be an amount on this because I'm not even sure what the estimation would be at this point in time. Normally, I know our treasurer and Julie is listening right now, very much likes to have um, amounts listed on these, but in this circumstance, I'm not really sure where to ballpark that amount. And I would hate to be short by a hundred dollars or something to that effect. But regardless, I think it would be um, best if we know at least where this money is being funded from. Yeah, do, do, so do we know what the financial ask is? Uh, and Julie, do you have an idea what the financial ask here is? I don't think, I'm no, Julie, we know. Know. Yeah, as the clerk just stated, we don't know the cost of the survey, so no Plus one- the legal costs, which are- No, no one uh, here knows. So it's only the survey costs and the legal fees. It's not to do with uh, uh, the purchase of uh, the shore road allowance. It's just the legal fees and the surveys. Okay. Correct. That and the probably... HST, and the HST, Paul, because you can't gift the HST. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't think it'd be more than ten thousand. I wouldn't think. But anyway. Okay. Do you have a comment, uh, Councilor Bocek? Just that um, there, there's the cost of the survey. There is the cost of the actual shore load, road allowance and the HST because the uh, the HST is going to have to be paid. Uh, to the government, and that is not something that's just going to be able to be gifted or, or, or included. That's a separate expense. So you can gift the the amount, and you can gift the survey amount, but the HST on those is going to have to be um, submitted. So that's another amount. Uh, Councillor, okay, I see Councillor Hazelton hasn't said anything yet. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so on one hand, I'm, a, I'm in favor of this. Uh, I guess one of the things that um, I see as a stumbling block here is the concept of a sketch or a survey. Um, I note that uh, <clears throat> in the past, our, um, uh, our staff have coached us where we have bylaws that prevent us from doing something that uh, uh, they have coached us on how we can suspend a bylaw or suspend a policy um, and move forward in a more expeditious manner. Uh, and um, given that uh, we have this short road allowance policy, I'm wondering if staff can coach us on how we can uh, suspend the, the policy that requires us to have a survey um, so that we don't have to incur something. I, I, I think that it's probably fair to say that given the land trust use of this property, they probably aren't planning to develop anything on it and probably don't really care where, they, where the shore allowance 
starts and stops and things like that. And so um, uh, I think a survey is of uh, a very uh, limited value in this whole process. So uh, I see our, um, our clerk has got her hand up and wants to tell me I'm wrong. I wasn't gonna phrase it like that, um, but a survey is legally required for us to transfer the land and for it to be registered on title for them to legally own it. So we do need a survey. So a survey sketch is not valid? No. Okay, so that what you're saying then, if I can translate is, uh, there are several um, applications that have come forward for other planning zoning related matters that we have not forced a, a current survey uh, we've accepted survey sketches, and I'm just wondering where we draw the line here, because if, um, sorry, if someone... Sorry, Councillor Hazelton, it's because we're transferring ownership of the land. It has nothing to do with the planning or what's happening on the land. It's the legal ownership that's being transferred. And that survey is required for that under provincial law. So it's not our policy. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Cooper? Just a, a point of clarification. I, I think our CAO mentioned that this hasn't really surfaced before. I don't think it has either because I'm not sure in terms of anything that's been accepted by the land trust where uh, there has been any shore road allowance or a, a requirement for the shore road allowance. So if there's been any land that uh, has been accepted that has shore road allowance and wetlands and so forth, they might have been in an area where there's very little what I'll say, transient boat traffic. This is high volume um, area. And uh, that's the, why the land trust uh, is desiring to be able to put signage on the shore road allowance. So I think that's the distinction um, that, that uh, is there. And um, uh, the only other thing I was going to suggest is that if uh, uh, Councillor Bocek could uh, send me a suggestion of somebody that we could work, the land trust could work with from a surveyor perspective, uh, we have our lawyers, so we know who they are, but, uh, but I think if we had a surveyor that uh, was uh, inclined to be supportive of the land trust, I'm not saying it would be a gifted thing, but maybe some careful consideration in terms of the cost that would be helpful. But um, I, I will reiterate, and this is not meant to, to put the heat on any of you, but I will reiterate that land trust has made it clear to me that, that if they have to forgo uh, the, um, uh, the, this acquisition they will because they simply are not in the position to be uh, paying all these fees when uh, you know it's a not-for-profit and trying to uh, save some of these lands and protect some of these wetlands so there we go thank you okay let me read the resolution uh, I don't know who has been moved by or seconded by uh, do we have somebody there Karen sorry yeah can I'm just going to pull it up real quick because it's now. Come on now, don't make the mayor feel like we're lost without him. <laughs> I'll read the resolution where you find the, the, the well, two. Well, hold on. Signatures. I'm just, I want to, um, it's changed is the issue. Cooper and Bochuk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Be it resolved that council direct staff to initiate the process of closing the road shore allowance adjacent to 23046 Georgian Bay Shore for the purpose of gifting the land to the Georgian Bay Land Trust and that council direct staff to reimburse the Georgian Bay Land Trust for the cost and the required SRA survey to complete the process. Any comments? Can I have the other screen back, please? Any comments, C Council Bocek? Just so that I'm clear, um, our policy states that the land trust will have to pay for the survey and 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 other fees uh, up front, and then this resolution will reimburse them those fees. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? Yes, You're please. muted, Mr. Chair. Karen is shaking her head, so that must be true. Any other comments? 
Uh, Wilson, whoops, Councillor Jarvis. I'm just going to go back here. I, while I'm in favor of the work of the land trust, I really have an issue here. If we don't know what the costs are, we're just, this is kind of a blind acceptance. Is there any way we can uh, word the motion in a manner that allows us some idea, inclu including uh, Ms. Boutillette, uh, an idea of what the costs are going to be? We can put a maximum amount. I know the amount of $15,000 was thrown out there for the cost of the survey. I personally don't know if that is acceptable or not. And I want to say offhand. I mean, we could get... I, I, the legal costs are $1,150. If we maxed it at... Sorry, what was your... What was your uh, the other costs were about how much again? We maxed it at like 15000 or something? Mm-hmm. So again, that's an estimate. In, yeah, we don't know. know. So we can put we can put in twenty thousand. Council can put in whatever they choose, but if it's over twenty thousand, we'll just have to have this conversation again. Well, I'd rather know what it's oh. going to cost and and then approve it than than not. And so I, I think the idea of putting a max on now and uh, and if we have to discuss it. We have to discuss it again. I think it's in our best interest. I don't have no, once again, I have no problem with land trust doing this. I have no problem with us funding. I just like to know what the fun, how much it's going to be. Uh, Councillor Cooper? Why don't we put in 16,000 and if, and see where it goes and, and uh, we'll find, find out. And we, at least we know what the max is. Is that satisfactory for Councillor Jarvis? If so, well, I would make it twenty. I would make it twenty thousand, just to be on the safe side. Is that fine, okay, I, Karen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, what what is the two mean? Twenty thousand? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Karen, can you just uh, bring up the resolution again and put that in? Yeah. The only portion that needs to be surveyed is the actual portion of the property that's being acquired or you are demanding a survey on the entire property? Um, I would have to verify exactly what they need for it to be registered on title. It's just okay. for the short road allowance. Yeah. Okay. So the survey cost is not going to be that much for a, a strip along land along the shore. So I'm comfortable with the, a maximum in there of 20,000. It'll probably come in half of that. Okay, you've seen the uh, resolution. All those in favor? Carry. Okay, back to you, uh, Mayor Coops here. Thank you very much for that. I um, appreciate you uh, taking on that matter. And uh, I believe our next item of business is closed session. So, the, the, the lengthy resolution moved by Councillor Jarvis, seconded by Councillor Hazelton, where Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001, as amended, provides authority for councils and municipalities to close a meeting or parts of a meeting to the public if the subject matter pertains to a matter identified in Section 239.2. And whereas the Council of the Township of Georgian Bay deems it necessary to close this portion of the meeting in order to address matters under the following section of 239.2. A. Litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting a municipality or local board, in this case, in regard to the Vincent L. Pat appeal for 34 Beverly Street. And B, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose in regards to the Honey Harbor Road. Now, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Georgian Bay moves in the closed session of Council at 1049 a.m. All those in favor? 